Hello and welcome to the News Click Studios in New Delhi. Uh, we're talking about the Union Sports Budget 2020 still. Uh, the reason we're talking today about a specific part of the budget is because my colleague Ajay came and said that we have a budget in the budget. We talk about defense, uh, all sorts of things, but we don't talk about sports. So that's why we're sitting with us today, Vaibhav Raghunandan and Gautam Navlakha, about talking about sports budget. Why uh, do you talk about sports budget? Ke I don't know, you live in which country? If you stay with us, then you don't talk about civil aviation. I think it's because maybe sports don't pay so much attention to sports. And the rest of the ministries, the allocation is a little bit small. कहां लाखों करोड़ एलोकेट होते हैं डिफरेंट मिनिस्ट्रीज को स्पोर्ट्स के लिए हजार 2000 3000 करोड़ मिलते हैं तो वो भी वजह हो सकती है और एंड इट्स नॉट सो फार बैक दैट दैट नंबर वाज 1/10 ऑफ ऑफ दैट अमाउंट एग्जैक्टली सो इफ यू लुक एट इट इन टर्म्स ऑफ द ग्रोथ इट्स पर्हैप्स वन ऑफ द एरियाज वेयर मनी हैज बीन पुट इन so we'll talk about a couple of these things, uh, the larger uh, sort of trends around the sports budget and where the money is being allocated and all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but before that, specifically this budget, uh, there are a couple of things that have come out from the little bit of study of the data that we've done. Mm. Uh, and that has to do primarily with the introduction of Kelo India, as we can see. Yes. Uh, and how that is sort of changing the the sort of broader, the, the paradigm in which Sport is being like the motto. carried out at the hmm. at the grassroots level. इसमें सिद्धांत एक बड़ी अद्भुत बात जो है कि साल 2015-16 में इसको बजट में खेलो इंडिया के लिए कोई प्रावधान नहीं था, कोई पैसे आबंटित नहीं किए गए थे। अचानक साल के दौरान ही 100-150 करोड़ रुपए खेलो इंडिया को दिया और उसके बाद लगातार खेलो इंडिया के लिए अलग से एक प्रोविजन शुरू हो गया और इस साल जाकर खेलो इंडिया को सबसे ज्यादा मतलब स्पोर्ट्स अथॉरिटी के मुकाबले में भी खेलो इंडिया को जो पैसे एलोकेट किए गए हैं 900 करोड़ रुपए के करीब yeah. जो कि स्पोर्ट्स अथॉरिटी को 500 करोड़ करोड़ yeah. तो वेब अब ये आ, मुझे लगता है एक दिलचस्प बात है आ, ब, ब, कुछ बता सकते हो व्हाट इज खेलो इंडिया खेलो इंडिया क्या है और स्पोर्ट्स अथॉरिटी ऑफ इंडिया का क्या काम था so, Sports Authority of India come was essentially grassroots promotion of sports. It's actually very similar to what Khelo India promises to do, which is build a holistic understanding and grow sports across the India mm -hmm. and revive a sporting culture. So, Sports Authority of India has been doing this for years and years mm -hmm. and years. Mm -hmm. Sports Authority of India also has infrastructure, has stadiums under its ambit, has coaches and has several high performance centers also where kids train, mm -hmm. kids and adult athletes mm -hmm. train. Mm -hmm. Kelo India started off as a school games. It was when Rajavardhan Singh Rathod was sports minister, he decided that we'll have Kelo India school games. The first edition happened in because, Delhi. Because, okay, let's be fair. Uh, the school games system, which is essentially governed by another sports federation called the School Games Federation, federation of India, India, yes. Which is, I think, currently, if I'm not wrong, run by either directly or the family of Sushil Kumar, the wrestler, Olympic medalist. Uh, so, the SGFI, essentially in theory, uh, was in charge of organizing nationwide or national level competitions for student athletes yes. at, at the school level. Hmm. With the perspective of or with the agenda of A, identifying talent that can be groomed to become elite athlete in, mm. in Olympic disciplines. Yes. And other stuff, but also to just have kids Promote. across India yeah. and uh, give them a competition sport, space. Give them a competition space, give them the space to meet each other and meet on the field and, and you know yeah. all of so that. Khelo India ke pehle is so it's like simple, like Kelo India, the way you can qualify. This tells you like pretty much everything you need to know about Kelo India. The way you can qualify for Kelo India games, youth games, is through the School Games Federation of India or through the National Sports Federation Nationals, Sub-Junior and Junior Nationals. That's how you qualify it. So this brings these two different groups of athletes together and puts them into a competition space. That's Kelo India Youth Games. Now from therein, they scout talent, they offer them scholarships, and they put them into different scholarship programs. Mm -hmm. The scholarship offered is six lakhs per annum for every kid who's 
selected. Selected, okay. Yes, and uh, they get like a 10,000 rupees stipend per year and the rest of it goes to the academy they train at for infrastructure, coaches, etc, etc. Mm. And these are run by Sports Authority of India. Most so, of yeah, so a lot of the kids who turn up at the Khelo India Youth Games who end up getting these scholarships are also SAI athletes. Like they train at SAI centers. So while... Now, if you look at it, the, the, if you look at the numbers and say, okay, okay, size budget has not come up, Khelo India budget has gone up. Essentially, there will be a significant portion of this budget that will be diverted to Sai only for infrastructure development or for infrastructure maintenance and coaches, which comes from these scholarship programs. Mm. Okay. Because Khelo India does not have its own coaches. Khelo India does not have its own sports facilities, despite the fact that they they would love to have it. They say that they give this money and they are developing their centers. There's nothing. If you look at the breakdown yeah, yeah, yeah. of Khelo India and the budget, mm. it says, it very clearly says, Commonwealth Games 2010, Sai, maintenance of stadium. That is, there's an allocation for that under the Khelo India yeah. program. So, which brings, which basically means ki you are increasing the ambit of Khelo India and reducing the ambit of Sai. You essentially want SAI, which is the governing authority for sports in India, mm. to have control over grassroots sports and promote sports at the most basic level. Mm. Khelo India does not do that yet. When the first time when Khelo India happened, what happened then? Was it meant for school? What happened then? Was it meant for school children, junior or... So uh, national level uh, sports. Yeah, th th this is what I was going to ask as well, a similar question. Hmm. Uh, in the beginning, it's okay. School games are revamped, re revitalized. Kar rahe not, not a bad idea. Why did the scope of this get expanded? And now you, you say, we are saying that it's become from school games to youth games. Hmm. Where we are seeing under 23... Le, tak, under 21. Under 21 tak kya hmm. Hmm. So under 21 means you're graduating from... You're college students. From, from yeah. university by then. Yeah. yeah. And there is, oh, by the way, there is going to be a Khelo India University Games also. Hmm. Which is happening in the end of February. Okay. So that's a... But so, so essentially, is it like the, the the emperor has decided to have the games, and and therefore you have these events. So money goes into the centers, like we're seeing uh, in Assam, right? Mm. Now the stadium, the facilities, also uh, hotels around. Overall, when tens of thousands of athletes come to a city, there's a boost to the economy. Mm. Uh, all these kinds of things are happening. So yeah. is that the perspective of having these Kilo India and having so much money available to Kilo India ki up situationally, politically, ya jis bhi tarah se aap dekhein, uske mutabik soch ke aap fir unko ek game se dein. I feel like the people of Guwahati will have uh, great answers for whether this Kilo India was something they really wanted or whether they enjoyed going and watching these. Mm. But you can, you, you chatted, you were there. Yeah. The game, so um, the well, from, from my understanding of the games from, from the public's perspective, mm -hmm. like regularly local news coverage of the games was, okay, if Assamese athletes were doing well, sure, there was a little bit of coverage. But otherwise, it was constantly about how the games had created trouble and how people who were participating in the games were not being accorded the facilities that you would expect them to be giving. Or they getting. had been assured. Yeah, they had been assured. So this was constantly this story. And by, uh, let's to make it just absolutely clear, when we're talking about facilities, we're not talking about air travel mm, and no, hotel no, accommodation. Exactly. We're talking about that if you have archery, then you have a tear and you have a bow. Dhanush. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's वो, वो that's you get or not, or you have to badminton, or you have to practice shuttle cocks or not. That's like that's you still going a little further in. Like what I'm saying is that in the initial week, there was absolute pandemonium, pandemonium because coaches and athletes had not gotten their accreditations. So mm -hmm. for, for there, were, there were athletes who were going to participate in their event, but their coaches had not got accreditation. Mm -hmm. So... That sort of hmm. ruckus was being created. Hmm. There was also ruckus about like where these athletes were put up. Hmm. Those hmm. hotels were not deemed good enough. Hmm. There was, I mean, these are all stories that were coming out in local newspapers. Like, I'm, I mean, some of them 
I may I have observed some of them I didn't see because it's impossible to be at every course, place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There was some about how the food being served to athletes was mm-hmm. like I mean not, not up to the mark. Yeah. But these are all like I mean these are all I feel at any level when they do events like this if you do an event like this these things happen. I no, they shouldn't happen. You mean mis- mismanagement, disorganization? Yeah. yeah. Sure, sure. Mm. But still, perhaps there is an overall objective. We saw, uh, for example, when the much talked about under 17 World Cup was happening in India, it was the first time India was ho- hosting a World, FIFA World yeah. Cup. Yeah. You know? First time an Indian team is participating in it. So all the money was there, the government support was there. Yet when the opening game was played at the stadium itself, there was utter chaos. But by the as things happen, Commonwealth Games 2010 also the same yes. thing. We were covering the yes. games; uh, it was very similar. But as things uh, we get into the flow of things, the, the organization part gets sorted same out. Same thing. Same thing happened so in Guwahati. Concern, really. Same thing happened in uh, Guwahati. But mm. the purpose is what I think. Correct. What we talking about? Correct. And them, I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's seeming like essentially it's a diversion of resources from uh, whether it's at an amateur level, giving kids the opportunity to play and spaces in which to play and uh, basic, even basic spaces. Mm. And uh, secondary from that is developing elite level talent. So we're taking resources away from this and putting it into essentially PR. Yeah. No. Yeah. Also. Yeah. And concentrating. I mean, I think the the motivation. I was talking to Ababa. You'll be able to explain better. I get a feeling, I could be entirely wrong, but correct me. I get a feeling that our emphasis more is towards promoting elite sports, uh, get more medals in international (laughs) events, not uh, do exactly what the the Kelo India Charter uh, uh, claims to be saying, which is expand, you know, development of sports culture in India. Because development of sports culture would not be through event management. Mm or holding events, but it's at a much more fundamental level. So, Weber, my question to you is, how much money do you think in contrast to events like this that are organized? Nobody is saying, uh, dismissing them for organizing some use. Yes, there is always some benefit that flows out of an event. Nevertheless, if you count what you the cost and do a cost and benefit analysis you will discover events uh, contribute less than something which promotes sports from ground level so what do you think yeah i mean i also there would i would say just quick one line to add when you do events you can do all sorts of events you don't have to yes. do super expensive events pan india events yeah. you can do smaller regional local events yeah. which would which attracts more the, local yeah. talent i mean actually it would be great if you did a khelo india assam games yeah yeah just to, ha- I mean, that All makes the more sense. Level, you mean. Yeah, that makes state, more state sense simply level from level the level grassroots level. development perspective, mm. which is essentially like right now, say, a lot of this money that is being put out is elite athletes competing against each other. A lot of the kids who are participating in the Kelo India Youth Games and winning the medals are not school children, are not kids who are. Oh, studying at like a BNS DAV and mm. doing yeah. judo and turning up and winning. There are mm. exceptions are oh, exceptions yeah, exist, yeah, yeah. but they are professional athletes. They've chosen to do this professionally. They want to go and represent India at the Olympics and perhaps win a medal. I mean, they desire to win a medal. Mm. So that's the idea, right? Like everyone, like Saina said this. I, every day I read some athlete or the other saying, Kelo India Youth Games will produce Olympic champions. Mm. Of course it will produce Olympic mm. champions because the kids who are participating in it are professional athletes. Mm. So if you no, if they are not producing Olympic champions, then who will? But that's not what that's it is not meant the perspect- for. Like, that's not at all what it should be doing. Mm. Or maybe Kelo India should be doing that. But that's not why you should be allocating so much money to it. The idea of like, Promoting spro- sports at the grassroots level, which is what SAI does, and now their budget is significantly reduced and will be concentrated towards developing el- elite athletes, is mm. has also been removed. Like it's just a simple that that simple idea. What is it that contributes to development of a sports culture? What does it? Is it creating more? medal winners and elite sports persons or is it 
expansion of sports at the grassroots level well kids have when as they are growing up access to sports field or parks where they can play or facilities which they can avail mm. of and where they get encouragement if they show talent to uh, move ahead and it need not be for winning prizes yeah so this is Sheer actually the pleasure of playing is also yeah. something yeah, definitely yeah. Yeah, yeah just i think access right access yeah. would be a fundamental thing i mean so many issues come into it i would uh, imagine now we have a rapidly uh, urbanizing sort of yeah. Uh, yeah. population uh, and shrinking uh, and space shrinking for shrinking children spaces, yes yeah, in these urban yeah. centers yeah. so uh, you talk about and uh, i mean in any context if you look at it like uh, the with some of these uh, protests popular protests that are going on these days some of the counter arguments was why do you have to block a road why don't you do it in a park right same thing you say yeah. with kids who are playing ki, yeah kya 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 bacche road pe kyun khel rahe hain because there are no facilities nahi par park mein bhi nahi khel sakte hain bacche aapko khelna allowed nahi hai bilkul nahi khelna allowed hai wah parks are for those things i'm sorry but for uncles and aunties to sit and gossip Yeah, yeah, or, or go for, for a my, gentle yeah. walk, which also ha- should have its space. No one is saying that there should not no, be no, parks that's for true. people to take walks in. Yeah, but not all parks should be, uh, you know. And then on the other hand, we say that like there are drug issues and kids are playing PUBG and doing all these kinds of things mm-hmm. because you have you on the one hand you've taken away spaces, you've taken away access to. Uh, sport games yes. and saath hi saath aapne mobile phone bhi pakda diya hai with almost unlimited free internet mm-hmm. to so this is actually a thing right like this is there's like several sai centers across the country mm-hmm. in areas that people don't regularly talk about right. in these centers there these sai coaches and sai's ambit is to go out into these areas hold camps bring kids who are talented in specific sports that they offer mm. and take them in mm. this is what a lot of sai centers do mm. you told me about kokrajhar center will yes. you share that with so us so it's when I mean, the sai kokrajhar center has 10 sports mm. I, i don't know what their reallocation will do how many sports will remain but from a four store sport sport special area game center mm. it expanded to 10 sports so they go they have x number of kids they have to keep in their facility right. every year that reallocation happens this year what i have been told is the allocation has dropped massively mm-hmm. the number of kids they going and usually it increases mm-hmm. it's like agar aapke 200 the to aap ek kaam kariye is saal 30 aur le aaiye bacche and different sports mein so they go to But now this year it's been cut down yeah this year it's been reduced overall and in specific sports even mm-hmm. more so mm-hmm. some teams you mean so yes. some disciplines have been yeah like, like for football for example right. the boys football team will only be allowed 15 kids mm. which is uh, ridiculous because if you go for a tournament you need 18 mm. Mm. so and judo has been eliminated completely from their program mm. where because uh, despite the fact that they had like three judokas from the sai kokraja center at the khelo india youth games representing assam right so but uh, so perhaps <laughs> that's not what is being looked at as a criteria for allocating i don't know so that's no, what so the point is not so of course like these three judokas will mm-hmm. be relocated to sai guwahati right which will have better facilities for judokas yeah. but what you have done by eliminating judo at the kokrajhar center yeah. is that now kokrajhar sai cannot conduct camps in say udalguri mm-hmm. and go and pick a kid who's got potential for martial arts they, they won't even mm. consider it like dekhenge hi nahi ab 15 bacche apne football ke aapke bhar chuke hain to ab aap camp bhi nahi kar sakte aur ye bataiye ki in areas mein jo jo ye bacche hain jo potentially khelna chahte hain talented hain kya inme inki families mein shamta hai bhejne ki baat this is not even a question come on <laughs> the, 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 mm. of course not Okay. Of course not. Of course not. Even now, I mean, the kids were there. Their families. I mean, for a lot of them, being at the Sai facility is not just about I want to become a world class sportsman. It's boss. This is the best thing that has happened to me in my yeah. life. I'm getting educated. I'm right. getting a bed. I'm getting food. Nutritious food. Yes. So and plus some sort of I suppose big ball. Uh, yes, you have yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolute. Big huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and 
So would you say that instead of promoting and building on size experience and expanding that, which might have actually helped, where Sai, uh, you were saying that Sai, that each center holds number of camps every yes, year. Yes, depending on the number of quota they have to fill yeah, for each yeah. sport, they will hold. But I like from my from speaking to different coaches, they hold about four camps every year for every each sport. Center. Yeah, each center. Yeah, each center for however many sports they so offer. Pokrajar had 10 sports there and they had f four camps in a year. So about 40 camps were held yeah, out. They, they the send out circulars like this ELG quite camp remarkable. Camp. But this will come down. Yeah. So the catchment, the possibility of attracting more mm. is uh, talent. I mean, look, I also, talent. I also want to say like Sai has its own problems. Sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But this, regardless of who it is, it's okay. The name does not matter. If Sai does not do it, then Khelo India should do it. If Khelo India cannot do it, then State Sports Federation should do it. But you're saying that Khelo India has neither the coaches nor, no. the, nor any kind of structure to do it. Essentially, what so, Khelo India will... So, is it like, essentially, ki aap, so the only people that will sort of benefit from the sports system now will be uh, people who have... Access to the access. sports. Either you are already from a decent enough background that... You or you get to go to a school which has uh, playing playing facilities, so you get to at least be, get basic level, entry level something there, and then you move into this Kilo India Games where if you win, then you get some money. Look, and then you go perhaps into some other program. Like take for example Sai Rohtak. Okay, a huge number of the kids who go into Sai Rohtak come from around Rohtak. Right. Right, and they come from families. Okay, Haryana is also well. It's an exception. वहाँ पे सब लोग, regardless who you are, they are sending their kids into sports training facilities. But if you take, I don't even know if there is a Sai training center in. Yeah, I think there is one in Ranchi. Yes, there is a Sai Ranchi. So the number of kids who are going to go in to that center is obviously going to reduce because of which the kids who are outside of that will just say, "Okay, actually." हम कहीं और रिलोकेट करके ढूंढ सकते हैं। But there's no other place. There's no other place. And which is which can be which is evident also from the fact that if you look at the contingents that turn up at the Khelo India Games, that in itself can give you an idea of कि कौन किसके पास पैसे हैं स्पोर्ट्स के लिए और कहां पर सेंटर्स हैं जिनमें स्पोर्ट्स खेला जा रहा है। अच्छा, हरियाणा, महाराष्ट्र, always top of the table in the medals. At the top when it comes to contingents. This year the biggest contingent was Assam, but that's for no, fairly no, obvious no, reasons. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what about like they say say like Kerala, which has a tradition of a sports being played as well as like sort of uh, you know uh, talented athletes across multiple disciplines, whether it's football, athletics, so many sports, volleyball. Uh, I mean, this is like a, we could wear off into a conversation about how Kerala sport has really declined. Because they were nowhere near... Let's not do that. But I'm yeah. just trying to get a sense of, like, did they send a decent contingent? <laughs> no, I mean, it was a average-sized contingent. I, from if my memory is... And Delhi? Decently-sized contingent, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, decently-sized. What about Punjab? Because <laughs> I would have thought that Punjab would rank high no. along with Haryana. No, Punjab is... It's... Strange, but yeah, Punjab is no. It's declined, is it? Also, the problem with Delhi is like when you go to like something like Halo India is like cycling. Almost every kid who is doing indoor cycling or rather velodrome cycling mm. was training at the Sai facility in Delhi. Mm. But they're from mm. different states. So they were representing their own states. The only in velodrome, there are very few velodromes in India and top mm. quality velodromes. So everyone comes to Delhi and trains here with Cycling Federation of India, which is again brings us back to the same idea of ki the kids who are participating here are already in the program. So why are the same those yeah, people get so picked it's, up? It's just like a, we are stuck in a vortex almost. But that's the, the, then it seems that Hello India has just added another layer to uh, the structure. 
without contributing in any, I mean, without creating any facilities, physical infrastructure of any kind, which Sports Authority of India does. But the interesting thing, Weber, is that Sports Authority of India is a registered society. Mm. Hello India makes it very clear that this is part of the government's own uh, sports promotion Mm. program. Yes. Whatever be the objective, I mean, sports culture, they may claim that they're spreading sports culture and expanding, but I have my doubts whether this is the best way of promoting it. Mm. It's still, we have to go back to uh, the grassroots level where uh, sports yeah, can yeah. be and the so called sports culture can be created. Yeah, it's an interesting point because then yeah. you, also one of the fundamental things in the Olympic movement when you look at it uh, is autonomy uh, of. Olympic bodies or sports mm. bodies from the government. Right? Yes. So yes. Freedom from inter- interference. So uh, why we're talking about or why Gautam made that distinction between mm. uh, what is uh, a registered society, yeah, a, a sports authority of India and a in government it. program. It, it, it's important because at some stage, if if this program starts to assume a larger chunk of the budget, it will become a fight between the Olympic Association and the sports ministry which will then become a fight between the International Olympic Committee, Committee and, and, and <laughs> India. And India will again, as it as happens... That's not a fight. Time, That's not, not a fight. That sort of a fight, ki you can't do this. Yeah. And then some changes will happen. So, so I think it's looking at reform from a... Or restructuring, reform, mm. whatever you want to call it, of the overall sports uh, structure from a very sort of populist and uh, like personal level. Ke, now, earlier you would, just uh, talk about uh, an athlete would be sort of uh, beholden to the government. Mm-hmm. Right? Because support you get from there. Now, it's not a government thing. Yes. It's a particular government doing a particular program. So, so the affiliation or the, the allegiance of the athlete is being also created at a very a much earlier stage to you know to perhaps the wrong mm. side because with this you know and sport mm. in all of this uh, is basically a scouting is, camp, is basically a scouting camp by the government to see who fits into their party the, correct yeah. <laughs> well, let's hope that that doesn't become the the sole objective of it. But it's unfortunate that it has to be. I mean, it's very good that allocations have increased. Uh, from what used to be hmm. uh, extremely low, uh, which meant that the government didn't give too, didn't care too much for sports, mm. to a point where it's being taken seriously for whatever purpose. Yeah. Now, what remains to be seen is how this larger allocations are actually going to create uh, uh, what what the government's aim is, which is creating and developing a sports culture in this country. If that, if that yeah. is the aim, yeah, or, yeah. or if the aim is to win more Olympic medals, so I just, I just, even see if I just want to bring about like then, just in terms of like Olympic medals, like I just want to like do a little bit, just stop talking about Kilo India and just tell you that the National Sports Federation's yes. budget for this year has not gone up. Mm. And this yeah. is an Olympic year. So, National Sports Federations are responsible for training and sending teams and yeah, athletes out. Yeah. So, this is the year of the Tokyo Olympics and they haven't increased the budget. And if I'm not mistaken, usually before... Yes, in the year Olympic before. Year, year before. Yeah, yeah they, yeah. they increased so the budget. I would have hoped last year last also, year. there was no allocation last year. In 1920, budget of 1920, mm-hmm. there is no allocation specially aimed at uh, Olympics. Let me, no, so there would be. The top scheme does exist. So yeah, but tops falls with Sai. Ha ha, j- j- wherever, whoever it falls with. I'm yeah. saying as as in as part of the overall allocation for sports, uh, the elite elite level who have been identified. We don't the know from the budget papers under which allocation. I'm not saying that. Like what I'm saying is national sports federations. Yes. Like just specifically, like Let's say the they were responsible. Yes. yes, they are not going to the Olympics. Hockey India. Hockey India. <laughs> Is going to the Olympics. So, Hockey India will get X amount of money 
to train their two hockey teams and send them for exposure tours for sure. their overall development and for the Olympics. Mm. So there are lots of federations, national sports federations have not, their, their money but has the, not yes, been increased for this year. Amount, the amount Which allocated expect. for national sports federation has remained, either come down or has remained the same as in the previous years. Which, seeing that this year is a year yeah, of Olympics, Olympics, is rather striking. One would have expected it to have increased at least. And yet, on the other hand, there are very loud proclamations being made of how this will be India's most successful Olympics mm, and yes. continue to do it. Yeah. Anyway, so th th I suppose this uh, will wind up. I think we've been talking I don't want to put this as an afterthought and the fact that I'm just putting this as an afterthought is like in itself sad, but I'm doing better than the government. The allocation for sports for disabled yes, that's does not exist. No, it doesn't so exist. I, Thank you for bringing up all these points. Obviously, yeah. clearly, mm -hmm. this is an Olympic year and there's lots of things to talk about in the build-up to the Tokyo Olympics, Games. Yes. Uh, and yeah. it's a nice way, I think, to kick off our coverage of, of some of these issues and we'll get more educated people than myself to have these conversations. <laughs> people who know more, more of the athletes and their real stories and what, what is happening with them. Both at the elite level, people who will be going to Tokyo, athletes, men, women, who will be travelling to Tokyo and competing there, what are the chances, we'll get into some of that. We'll also talk about some of these structural things, uh, para-athletes, yes. uh, Special Olympics, uh, that which is for athletes with intellectual disabilities, how all of these fit into India's larger sports program, uh, program and how, based yes. on some of these things, women's sports specifically, what are, are yeah. there programs that are... Because... We don't get any idea from the budget. Right. So, how much of the money is being allocated for, for, for women, for instance, right. uh, which requires, given the historical uh, backlog, mm. you require to put make extra efforts where yeah. uh, women yeah. are concerned. Yeah. And also, I mean, kind of like it's a, it's a way to justify whatever your own hypothesis is when you, when you do a, an outlay, right? A plan jab bana rahe hain. Agar dekh rahe hain ki Haryana mein jab se aurto ne kushti karna shuru kiya hai, डायरेक्शनल Uh, focused on where hmm. you're putting the money instead of like big chunks to sort of vague programs with vague so actually like Khelo India ke charter mein un logo ka 12 point ka hai ki hum ye ye kar rahe hain usme se ek point hai which is which is clearly says please go to their website and see it says sports for women so i think they're developing sports for women like specific sports new sports nice sports. because <laughs> un log aise hi yes. bolna chahte hain yeah 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 like it's yes. yeah <laughs> it's i think a freudian slip because uh, <laughs> yeah और चर्चा जारी रहेगी थैंक्स फॉर वाचिंग दिस एपिसोड एंड लगी रहिएगा न्यूज़ के साथ थैंक यू